Reconciliation between Donald Trump and, quote, establishment Republicans seems likely, but another conservative voting bloc isn't fully on board yet, evangelical Christians and top leaders. Trump polls well with the group, but some say they may sit home come November. Not sure that Trump's beliefs actually match up with their own. This weekend, Trump agreed to meet with evangelical leaders later this month, actually next month. Tony Perkins, president of the Family Research Council, will be at that meeting and joins us now live. Great to see you, Tony. Shannon, good to be with you. All right, this is important because Trump often touts the support he has of evangelicals. He'll point to the votes and say, look, I won them overall across the South and everywhere else. I mean, do you think that he feels like he has that locked up? Or is him coming to this meeting with you and other top evangelical leaders acknowledgement that he's got more to do? Well, I think he, he did remarkably well with people of faith. When you look at evangelicals, those that go to church on a weekly basis where their faith is very central to the decisions they make, he didn't do as well with them. And, and that's what a lot of these leaders represent. And there's been this conversation about how how can we get to a point where we can support Donald Trump. And a lot of people want us to be supportive of Donald Trump. And you know, we were t discussing this, and, and one of my colleagues, Bill Dallas, reached out to, to Dr. Ben Carson, who's kind of been the one who has gone between here. And Ben Carson does understand evangelicals, and he's playing, I think, a key role in the Trump campaign, which is very, I think, very helpful to Donald Trump. So I'm optimistic that out of a conversation, and that's what this is, it's a conversation that we could see positive things come from. Is this going to be public or private? It's a private meeting. Probably have uh, 500 uh, conservative, uh, social conservative leaders, not just evangelicals, conservative Catholics, coming together for a conversation. I want to emphasize that this is not a precursor to an endorsement. It's, it's a lot of people who are just indifferent, have not been supportive of Donald Trump, not against him but simply want to have a conversation. They want to be comfortable. And he's made some good moves. Uh, you know, you follow the court. Mm -hmm. He released the, this list of uh, potential court picks, uh, which was a positive sign that he's listening to the concerns of conservatives who understand that the left has used the court to radically alter America's political and cultural landscape. Let's talk about the court a little bit because there are 11 names that he put out there. He did say, uh, in talking to our Sean Hannity, well, I'm not committing that it's act exactly going to be one of these 11, but these are the kind of people that I'm talking about. I mean, there were some names that jumped out to me right away. Diane Sykes, chief among them, a federal judge um, who has sort of been on the conservative wish list for a long time. Um, so looking at that list, do you feel if it's one of those folks or someone very similar? They, they were all good. It was a them. smart list. Uh, Don Willett, I know, mm -hmm. uh, and there are others on the... I, I probably would not have put out a list of names because now they've become targets for mm -hmm. the left. I think process is more important than actual persons being listed because there will be hundreds, as you know, nominees right. in the lower court the appellate courts. And so I think him saying that, look, I'm going to work with the Federalist Society. They're going to help me vet these nominees. I think that's a strong message. I think, you know, even reaching out and saying, you know, what, I'm going to have Ted Cruz help me in vetting these nominees. Now, will he go that far? I don't know. But it will be a positive message, I think, to conservatives who really did trust Ted Cruz when it came to the courts. Do you trust Mr. Trump, though, because there are those who say, hey, I like this list. But I'm not confident when, it, when the rubber meets the road and he's got to deal with Congress, he's got to deal with the Senate to get somebody onto the highest court. And many of these federal benches, as you mentioned, there will be hundreds of openings. Um, do you feel that he'll be consistent? That's a valid question that many are asking and a concern that's been expressed. Because I've been in politics for 20 years. I've held public office. I've been here in Washington advocating on the outside for 13 years. And record is important. You know, someone's record is the best indicator of future performance. Donald Trump doesn't have a record in public office. And his record and his stand on some issues is actually contradicts what he says today. So that's why I think a, his VP pick is going to be very important. It's got to be a conservative who conservatives trust, but also has the ear of Donald Trump and will it, 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 Donald Trump will take his counsel. I think that's going to be very important in building this confidence that he needs to have with conservatives. Well, we'll look forward to that meeting, I believe, June 21st. In New York, yes. All right, we will watch closely. Wait, you're going to find 500 conservatives in New York? We're going to have to ship <laughs> them you're, in. You're shipping them in. <laughs> well, I'm not going to get <laughs> into New York values. I'm not going to get we into We won't that. do that, yeah. but All it'll right. be a very interesting meeting and what comes out of that as well. Tony, thank you. All right, Shannon. Good, good to see you. Thanks. Leland.